Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another day in lockdown. Uh, day three, I think I'm at. And already this is becoming my favorite spot in the hotel room. I can sit here and watch the world go by. So I guess it's a reasonably busy intersection. I'm pretty close to downtown Sydney right now. And uh, so yeah, watching people coming and going, wondering what they're doing, if they're on their way to work or, you know, whatever you can do when you're in that outside world. Uh, yeah, it's funny to, to keep realizing every now and again, I stand up and I sort of go to walk out the door and then I'm like, nope, not walking out the door. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm seeing a ton of comments online about this whole lockdown thing and different people's thoughts and ideas. And so I thought today I'll just do a huge big question and answer session and I'll try to get a whole bunch of questions out of the way. I'll talk about what it was like when I first got here, how it all went down, you know, what's this whole quarantine thing about? Does it make sense? All the way through to the logistics, people are asking about the food, they're asking about the laundry. So if you're interested in what quarantine's like when you get to Australia, either you're gonna be doing it soon or you just wanna know how it works, stick around. Uh, I've got a hot drink, I recommend you get one as well. Uh, and I'm not going anywhere, so maybe you shouldn't either. So let's back up a little bit. I'm seeing tons of comments online where people are saying, you know, Australia is violating my rights or something like that by forcing me to be in this hotel for two weeks. And I just wanna step way back and say, this is totally voluntary. I didn't have to come here, you know, I had a place in Canada. Canada's a really beautiful, safe place to be. This was voluntary. I chose to come here, I chose to do this. Uh, and you actually have to register ahead of time on the Australian government website. And you have to acknowledge that yes, quarantine for 14 days is mandatory and I accept it and you know I know that this is going to happen. So it's not like they sprung this on me, it's not like it's a surprise. Uh, and you know, in terms of violating human rights, I mean, I'm perfectly comfortable, I'm warm, I'm safe, I'm getting three meals delivered a day. This isn't prison, this isn't horrible by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, they're even calling me every single day to check on my mental health. They're providing quizzes and games. We've got a Facebook group for everyone here in the hotel where we're all being silly and keeping each other entertained. So I think in terms of violating human rights, I'm just gonna say, no, that's not very close to reality. Uh, so quarantine, why is it even happening? What's Australia doing? It's important to remember, you know, Australia is an island and it is really far away from the rest of the world. It was a 15 hour flight to get here from Los Angeles to Sydney. Um, so isolated island, obviously really good case or a good chance to completely eliminate COVID and not have to deal with it. And so that's what Australia and New Zealand and a couple of other countries around the world did. They locked down really, really hard right at the beginning of COVID. And ever since then, they basically have none in the entire country. So that means for 25 million Australians, that's the population here, life has gone back to normal. They're having sporting events with 40,000 people in the stadiums, bars are open, restaurants, nightclubs. You don't even have to wear a mask in nearly all of those scenarios. So Australia, basically at this point in time, it's June, 2021, they have an island paradise where COVID isn't a thing, uh, you know, kind of thing that the rest of the world dreams about. And it's their choice and they've decided that they wanna keep it that way. And I completely understand and I agree with them. And part of the reason I've chosen to come here is because of that. Once I do this quarantine, I'm free to explore the entire country. There really aren't any restrictions on where I can go. You know, you can't do that elsewhere in the world right now because COVID is still such a problem. So Australia have this idea or, you know, it's true. The only way that COVID can affect them again is from people coming in from outside the country. So the first thing they've done is they've closed the border to everyone except citizens and direct relatives of citizens. So tourism in Australia, there isn't any, and there probably won't be any for a long time to come. So that's limited the number of people who can even get in. And then when you do get in, they force you to come and stay in a hotel like this for two weeks. Because the incubation period is up to two weeks, you know, I could have COVID right now, but I don't even know it, and it'll take a while before the symptoms develop. Or even if I don't get symptoms, it'll take a while until it goes away and I'm not contagious anymore. So then I'd be safe you know, to go out on the streets and not infect anyone else. So really they're doing it to keep themselves safe from the outside world. Because from the perspective, you live on this island paradise, you don't have COVID, you have a really good life. Everyone else out there is infected. Everyone else out there is essentially like they have the zombie plague. Why would you wanna let the zombie plague onto your island nation? I mean, you just wouldn't. 
So this quarantine thing, you do have to pay 3,000 Australian dollars to be locked in the hotel like this for two weeks, which you know works out to about $200 a day, which I guess is a bit expensive as far as hotels I've ever paid for in my life. But I do have to remember it doesn't only include the hotel, there are actually nurses and doctors here in the hotel right now that I could call and you know, they're in the building should I need something or even if I just wanna to talk to someone. Uh, I'm getting three meals delivered every single day. And obviously too, there's a whole bunch of like cleaning and stuff like that that has to go on. Once I leave this hotel room, they can't just check someone in or just do the regular cleaning procedure that a hotel would do. They're gonna to have to do a seriously deep clean in case I have COVID, you know, they have to make sure it doesn't get passed on. So. For $200 a day, I mean, yeah, that's an annoying amount of money, but I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think it's crazy. On top of that, you know, the government has to pay right now. There are members of the Australian military downstairs. There are security guards on every single floor of this hotel. There's a lot of people involved in the big process. So to only have to pay $3,000, I think is not so bad. Uh, and a few people asked, you know, what if you don't have the money? If you don't have the money, Australia does give you a couple of different options. You can go on like a payment plan. I think you pay like $100 a month or something like that. I haven't actually gotten the details yet. I believe I'll get the bill when I actually leave. Um, you could obviously pay in one lump sum, but I think you can do a payment plan option as well. And that varies a little bit depending on which state you've flown into. I flew into Sydney, which is the state of New South Wales, just because I heard it was the most reliable and the most likely to actually work. So on that too, flights right now into Australia, they are severely restricted. A ton of companies who regularly fly to Australia currently aren't. There just simply uh, is not enough quarantine space to allow many people in per day. Uh, and getting a flight, I didn't find it very difficult. I booked with a travel agent. I booked about 60 days ahead and I paid two and a half thousand Australian dollars for my plane flight. That's one way from Canada. I transited through the US and then came here to Australia. And that sounds really expensive, but it's important to remember that flights to Australia before COVID, they're always getting close to $2,000 anyway, maybe 1,800, 1,900, kind of depending on exactly what time of year. Over Christmas, 2,500 would be cheap. So it is certainly inflated, but it isn't outrageous. But anyway, all of that to say is that it really does cost close to $6,000 by the time you get here. I had to pay for a COVID test, you know, airport shuttles, whatever else. You're gonna spend about 6,000 Australian dollars to fly to Australia right now and then get locked in a hotel room for two weeks. A few people also asked uh, if you're vaccinated, yes, you still have to quarantine. Australia aren't interested, again, in compromising their island paradise. And of course, even if you've had two vaccine shots, you can still definitely get COVID and you can still definitely transmit it to other people. And because Australia hasn't had COVID, they haven't rolled out the vaccine as fast as the rest of the world. I think Australia are at about 5% vaccinated right now. So even if I had both shots, if they, when I landed, maybe they give me a COVID test, I'm negative. If they just let me wander the streets, there's a chance that I would start infecting people and then it's gonna run rampant in Australia where people aren't vaccinated yet. So they're not gonna let people in who've had both vaccine shots if it compromises their own safety. Think about it, would you do it? No, there's no way. So having two vaccine shots doesn't make any difference. Being a citizen doesn't make any difference. Uh, and can you quarantine at home or anything like that? No, absolutely not. So don't think of a regular arrival airport. When I landed, it was utterly different than anything I've ever seen before. We were explicitly told we weren't allowed to get off the plane until Australian officials had come on. People came on the plane in full hazmat suits and they made an announcement about, you know, right now we have this coronavirus, you have to quarantine, you have to follow all the orders, all the directions, all of that kind of stuff. We were escorted off the plane and then Sydney Airport, the international arrivals area, has been completely transformed. There are barriers everywhere, there are police everywhere. In fact, when I finally got to leave the building, even the Australian military are there helping you get on the bus that's going to take you to quarantine. Uh, so it's not like you can just sneak away or you can say, no, I refuse to do this. Um, and then so we caught a bus here into town and a police officer actually came on board. And I always do notice police officers do carry guns in Australia. They just have a small handgun on their side. Not that he brought it out or anything like that. I just mention it because, you know, they're taking this quite seriously, a, a full uniformed police officer. He came on the bus and 
Australians are always so down to earth. It's always shocking for me when I come back from North America, just sort of how casual he was and how friendly. And he's like, hey guys, look, you know, everyone here is doing the best job they can. The staff at the hotel, you know, the police officers, the military, they're just doing their jobs. Please don't give them a hard time. Please don't be rude to them. You know, and I appreciated that. I think that's a really fair thing to say. And then he also did say, look, the public health minister of Australia has declared whatever it is, a medical emergency or whatever words he used. Therefore, they have made a legal order that you must quarantine for 14 days. He made it very clear. He said, if you do not obey those orders, you are breaking the law, you will be arrested. That is absolute straight. If I walk out of this hotel room right now, I will be arrested. If I had refused to come into the hotel room, I would have been arrested. So in terms of can you skip quarantine for any reason or can you sneak away? No, you definitely can't. This is 100% mandatory. And I don't have a crystal ball. I can't see the future. Right now it's June, 2021. I will be surprised if anything changes within six months. I think it'll be like this for all of 2021. And in fact, personally, I think it'll go on into 2022 because again, Australia doesn't wanna let COVID in. Why would they? It doesn't make any sense. So that's what it was like when I actually arrived here. Uh, and now, yes, I'm locked in this hotel room for 14 days. Um, and a few of the logistic things about being in here that people have asked. Uh, I am getting three meals delivered per day and people are really curious. I'll probably do another video about that soon. Um, laundry, people are asking about. You can get laundry done. It costs $50 for a bag. And uh, I'll go and get the bag to show you. I didn't think $50 sounded too bad, you know. And then I saw the size of the bag. This costs $50. So right now I have, I don't know, a couple of pairs of shorts, some pants, a couple of shirts, and a few pairs of underwear. And it's already nearly full. So for $50, that really isn't much laundry in my opinion. I would have thought the bag would be twice that big, uh, but so be it, what are you gonna do? Uh, in terms of cutlery, they provided me a couple of plates, a couple of kit, uh, like bread knives, forks, spoons, and a bowl, and I just have to wash them myself. So they've provided some um, dish soap, some sponges, you know, some cloths. So I actually am washing them myself just in the bathroom sink, which is a pretty strange experience in a hotel. But, you know, they're making it work. Uh, and when the food is delivered, it comes with no cutlery of any kind. So it's been in these kind of um, recycled cardboard containers. And actually, you can eat out of the container, no problem. It's kind of like eating takeaway. Or you can choose to put it on your plate if you want to. But you do have to do your own dishes. Um, you can get your laundry done. And in terms of trash, it is actually accumulating quite fast from all of the food. And they have a procedure for that as well. You bag it up, they've provided trash bags. You have to bag it up and put it outside your door uh, and you know they take it away. And on that too, in terms of, you can actually open your own door. I didn't know how that was going to work. They've put a little table in front of my door, like a little coffee table. And so that's where the meals show up. They put one there, they knock on the door, and then they ask that you wait 30 seconds before you open your door so the person who put it there can you know move away. And you must wear your mask whenever you open your door. Obviously, they're trying really hard to prevent the spread of COVID, you know, from me to anyone who's dropping off food or even maybe from me to other people who are quarantining. Um, so I open my door the three times a day when I'm getting meals and I actually spend a bit of time at the peephole just watching uh, to see who's in the corridor and waiting for food. Um, I've also opened it when I got a COVID test, when my bags got dropped off from the airport. Um, and to put out some trash, I've done that once already. So I can open my door, but I try hard. I open it, I grab whatever's on the table, and then I close the door again. It's literally open for three seconds each of those times. Other rules, uh, they've given me this like rule sheet with all the information, which some of them are really interesting. Some of them are really funny that uh, I just find kind of personally amusing. And one of those things is you can actually get stuff delivered here to the hotel. So you can buy anything you want from the supermarkets in Australia. They all do home delivery. Uh, you can buy anything you want from like Amazon or any kind of online retailer, no problem at all. Uh, it's really nice to be able to get food delivered. Lots of people say, you know, they're getting chips and kind of snack food and other things that you really want to have. You can also get things from Uber Eats. You're allowed to get one delivery like that per day. Um, this hotel has a built-in restaurant. I can order anything I want off their restaurant. 
though of course I have to pay for it. That would be, you know, extra food on top of the three meals a day that I'm already getting delivered. Um, and you can, if you want, you can order alcohol as well. But it's really fascinating. They won't let you get more than one bottle of wine or a six pack of beer delivered each day. And they even say, let's hypothetically say, if you bought like a case of beer, they're happy to keep it downstairs at reception or whatever. And then every day they'll just bring you up a six pack. And I guess this is like a health and safety thing. You know, they, they don't want someone up here to just drink a huge amount of alcohol while they're locked in their room. Uh, but when I read that, you know, I like to circumvent rules. So I read that and I said to myself, okay, well, I should just get like a six pack delivered today and, to, and, and every day of the whole quarantine, but then drink them all on the last day. Cause then I'll have like two cases of beer or more up here or, you know, 10 bottles of wine. Uh, I'm not actually gonna do that, but I think it's kind of funny that you could if you wanted to circumvent their like, you know, consumption policy. Uh, there's a few things that are prohibited that you're not allowed to get delivered. Things like toaster ovens, you can't have because it might set off the smoke alarm. It says you can't have sharp objects like steak knives or scissors. Again, I guess they're worried about mental health. Uh, little do they know, I actually brought a knife with me. Uh, it was in my checked luggage. Uh, it's, a, it's a little camping like serrated, really sharp knife. It went all the way from Alaska to Argentina and all the way around Africa. So I figured I should bring it to Australia so it can go all around Australia with me too. Uh, you can't have cigarettes of any kind because you set off the smoke detector. So if you are a smoker, they said that they'll provide you with nicotine patches or nicotine gum. But I think this would be really hard if you were a smoker. It would basically be like enforced quitting smoking. Um, and then there's some information in here about departure and about when that'll happen and how that'll happen but we can cover all of that later. In terms of who you can quarantine with, when you're flying in, you can elect to quarantine with your family if you choose to. Obviously, if you were married or if you had kids, you can all be in one room together. And then it does get cheaper. It isn't actually $3,000 per person. I think it's $3,000 for the first person and then it's $1,000 for each additional person. So, you know, a husband and wife is four grand and then it would be like another grand for every child that you have. So still certainly expensive, but not 3,000 each. And that's about all there is to it. Other than that, it's a regular hotel room like you might expect. I obviously have a hot shower. I have a little mini fridge where they gave me a big jug of milk that I have in the fridge and obviously anything that I buy outside. Um, so, you know, I just have to kind of live in this hotel room now for two weeks food is provided, I'm comfortable, I'm warm, I'm dry, I'm safe. So all things considered, it's all pretty good. And that's about it really. I just need to find ways to occupy and pass the time. I've ordered a few things online that should be pretty fun, it should keep me entertained. And I hope to share those with you and kind of learn some new skills, but also keep myself to entertained as I go along. So hopefully they arrive pretty soon here. And uh, yeah, if you've got any more questions, if you'd like to know more about what's happening while I'm here in quarantine, the whys, the whats, fire a question down in the comments, let me know. And I'm happy to answer more questions about what it's like to be locked in a hotel room for 14 days. And uh, do me a favor out there, go outside, rub your feet in the grass, maybe smell a flower and look up at the sunshine. And uh, I'll ask you to do that for me because I can't right now. So enjoy that outside time. I'm jealous.